Okay. Society. <clears throat> I want to welcome you all from the Chicago Evo Society. Uh, you're in for a delightful program with Gika and Michael. Uh, Karen Underhill, one of our board members, will be introducing them. Uh, I hope all of you know about the Chicago Evo Society, but if you don't, I'm going to tell you that we are a all volunteer organization. We have been presenting uh, free programs on Zoom during COVID. Uh, all of our members on the board do this out of the uh, love of Yiddish in their hearts, but we need your support. So if you go to our website page, chicagoevo.org, you can find how to donate to us online or by mail. Uh, our address is Chicago Evo Society, 141 West Jackson, 1520A, Suite 1520A, excuse me, Chicago, Illinois. Uh, I'm admitting some more people right now. Uh, and please enjoy today's program. And there's gonna be two more programs in December. One is gonna be in Russian with Boris Sandler, and one will be in Yiddish translated by Jeffrey Mallow, our chair emeritus uh, and, uh, of Naborski, Dr. Naborski from Paris. Uh, but without further ado, Karen, please introduce our guests. Thank you, Jake. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, a huge warm welcome to everyone who was able to join us today. I just want to reiterate um, what Jake said. You are the reason we're here. Chicago Yiva Society exists to share with you some of the vibrancy of Yiddish culture today and to keep you connected to it to the extent that we can. So with today's program, we have a double treat and a special honor to welcome back to Chicago Yiva one of the monumental and most inspiring figures in Yiddish music and East European Jewish cultural continuity today. A musician, singer, and folklorist, Michael Alpert. Michael Meshka is known for the magic of his musical alchemy, his working at the intersection of folk music traditions. Michael came to us in Chicago in 2015. This afternoon, we're delighted to travel with you to him um, to a fishing village, Crail, on the coast of Scotland, where he is joined by Scots and klezmer fiddler, Jika Loning. Born and raised in Edinburgh, Jika is a cultural arts professional based uh, across the Firth of Forth from Michael. She's director of Edinburgh's Fun Fiddle Project, a seasoned fiddle player and teacher. Jika founded Edinburgh's Bell Star Band, Kelter Schmelter, and the Ladies' Gorilla String Quartet. She is a prominent community music practitioner specializing in early years projects, and she runs East, Lothi East Lothian's Youth Music Initiative, and a special welcome and shout out to guests coming in from Scotland. For those of you who may not already know his work well, Michael Alpert is a pioneering figure in the Renaissance of East European Jewish music and Yiddish culture since the 1970s and a National Heritage Fellow of the United States, uh, the USA's highest honor for traditional and heritage artists. His invaluable collection of ethnographic fieldwork that he compiled during travels and research in Eastern Europe resides today at the United States Library of Congress. Michael is internationally known for award-winning performances and recordings with Brave Old World, Itzhak Perlman, Andy, St Andy Statman, and many others. He's a native Yiddish speaker and a bridge to pre-World War I East European Jewish musicians. He is a leading traditional Yiddish singer and also a composer of new Yiddish songs. Hailing originally from California and New England, uh, he now lives in the village on the east coast of Scotland, where we join him and Jika as they explore the meeting points of traditional and contemporary Scottish and Yiddish music and highlight the unique place of Yiddish music in Caledonia today. Welcome, Michael. Welcome, Jika. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Karen. A good night, men. In the Lexen Gate, a ring, a million kerring, the Steindal has an end, so you know, the Steindal has an end, so you know, we do us three that sing it up, and in Asma 
Good evening, everybody. Uh, I say good evening because it is evening here in the East Nuke of Fife in Scotland. Um, we're more than delighted to <laughs> be here with you all. Uh, as Jake mentioned, uh, I did a program for the Chicago YIVO um, a few years ago and uh, delighted to be able to join you from uh, my home for the last uh, eight years uh, or so, and I've been coming here even longer. Um, for those of you that might be wondering where we are this evening, um, it is uh, we're in a village called Creil, which is uh, northeast of Edinburgh on the coast. If you know where St Andrews is, the, the home of the famous university and uh, the third oldest university in the now English-speaking world, and uh, one of the homelands of golf, um, we are about ten miles from there on the coast. And the, so the east coast of Scotland, and uh, I'm also delighted to be here with my one of my very best friends in Scotland and musical partner, Jika Loning, who um, was introduced to you with glo in glowing terms uh, <laughs> by Karen just uh, a moment ago. Um, appropriately, we started with a song about rain, um, even though actually where we live here is the sunniest part of Scotland. Uh, but in uh, Dresden Gate, the regen outside, it's raining. The stones are all uh, already wet, and uh, basically, it's a uh, not entirely unrequited love song. Um, we're going to continue with a couple of instrumental tunes here from the out of the klezmer tradition, um, and as I, if you've paid any attention at all to the uh, the. Our advertising for this concert, um, what 
G.K. and I do together is not only uh, Yiddish music, um, klezmer music, etc., cetera, uh, and Yiddish song, but we explore the in, in, interwoven uh, themes and, and histories of both uh, East European Jewish and Scottish tradition, and also our, my identity as, as, uh, as an uh, uh, as an American and and as someone who's I think that goes for both of us have you know spent a lot of time delving into uh, American traditional music as well <clears throat> so um, mm. so I'm delighted to be here as well and, and usually um, we wave to each other from across the water I'm in Edinburgh which is straight over if you could see through this red curtain you'd see the sea and Edinburgh on the other side um, quite a long drive round but as the crow flies not too far so we're working on a boat or something or some right, kind right. of some kind of like winged thing to get us across it's kind of it's kind of like the bay area if the bay if the bay bridge wasn't there so um <laughs> shall we just hit it yeah. mm.
Thank we, you. Uh, thank <clears throat> you. We can't hear your clapping, but we can see you, which is lovely. <laughs> right, right, right. Nice. We, uh, right. We see you loud and clear. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right, then. Um, Good. We're, we're, we're moving on into um, something that we've been working on a lot together, which is a kind of coming together of, oh, where's he going? Coming together of Scottish and, um, and Yiddish. So this next piece is an example of that. And I'm going to start off with a tune, um, which is by a friend of mine, Rona Wilkie. Um, and I'm terrible at pronouncing the Gaelic, but it's Do Croatian Napi Napier. Napier. And so anyone out there that can speak Gaelic and put me to shame, perhaps you can correct my pronunciation. But um, it's basically Napier's crofters. So just to give you a tiny bit of background, um, the, um, the crofters uprising, of which this tune refers to, happened was Ha this particular uprising happened in in 1883 and it, it followed on from um, years of the troubled clearances which some of you may know about and perhaps not all of you Scotland you know has a very traumatic past which has only relatively recently been much written about um, where basically the lands were cleared uh, especially across the West Highlands uh, for sheep and crofters, the small holdings, were moved off the land and, e and droves of people um, had to leave Scotland, travel across the sea. Um, <laughs> a lot of similarities with what we have in the news today, people drowning on the way, you know, many deaths, lots of people didn't make it, but a lot of the people and perhaps some of your ancestors um, in America um, and Canada are from Scotland, originally the West Coast. And um, perhaps some of you have that heritage. Um, so the, the Crofters uprising was a particular uprising where the Crofters decided they'd had enough. They'd been shoved to the edge to the coast um, where they had to fish the dangerous seas and um, uh, where they would have lived inland previously um, and farmed and had livestock. Um, so um, there was a huge rebellion and the soldiers and police from Glasgow and beyond were sent in by the UK government, a Boris-like figure, no doubt, um, who um, tried to quell the rebellion. Um, but a significant thing came out of this, which was actually that Lord Napier of the Napier family, which is a yet another landowning family, which Scotland is plagued with, um, uh, was was put in place by the government to um, produce some kind of a report and a commission inquiry into this rebellion and to hear all sides. Now this was a very significant thing because it was the first time that this had actually ever happened. Formerly, um, before that, the crofters were just turfed off the land, died, had to leave the country, whatever, but nobody ever got to hear their side. So this tune was written kind of in commemoration of that rebellion and of the fact that the Napier Commission um, kind of opened the way for um, land reform in Scotland, which still hasn't really happened, but we live in hope. Um, right. And we now have a thing called a community buyout, which Scottish government brought about. I'm not going to go on any longer. That's, <laughs> That's all right. But that. Some of you might be interested in terms of the community buyouts that the people in the west of in the Western Isles of Scotland, a.k.a. the Hebrides, are buying their entire islands um, uh, for their as a community. And um, in any case, we live right on the edge of both. Be we live 200 meters from the sea here and we live on the in the edge of behind us are just fields and a lot of these same issues of land ownership and uh, and and owning aristocracy are very much still alive around here uh yes yeah, so we so have no sorry. you go ahead if what, you want. No, all right so yeah just um the this um melody weaves the tale of love loss and sorrow and pain and and in that the Yiddish song that you are singing 
has some connection, even though it's more particularly uh, I, love. It, yeah, it, <laughs> it's a love song, but it's a song of wandering and uh, separated lovers because of this institution of arranged marriage, which was um, caused a lot of travail in Jewish Eastern Europe, and um, in, in uh, some ways, and that tradition continues in a lot of too many places in the world today. Um, that's my personal take on it. Um, but the song, this Yiddish song, the Baramtaich, Have Pity Good People, is like a, uh, a really it's like a Russian novel of separation of lovers. And then and one of them, the man becomes a beggar and is, is going from door to door, is a mendicant, is homeless. And uh, he runs into the his former suitor who he jilted and in the meantime he's become poor though he was raised very rich and she's become well to do she recognizes him he doesn't recognize her and at the end in the one of the only instances i know of in the folk tradition in which a man apologizes to a woman at the end he says uh you don't need to tell me uh that this is the how God is repaying me for what I did from my ears, from, from my eyes, are running rivers of tears when I remember uh, what I did to you. So, Akrochteren, Nepiren der Barmtach. Meine liebe Menschen, der Baramtach hinter ein Neuid, in der Gottsolach mit Eilem in Gidbenschen, der Baramtach in der Schenktastikel Breuid, was euch die Schämste sich nicht, gehen als euch gerissen, was euch die Schämste sich nicht, euch strecken dann on. Nor the saint siki volt ihr volt wissen. Fim von eti jese dank geboren lon. Mein geboren Lohn, die Sache sehr wahr. O in Gizeugen bin ich sehr rach. Nur der keine Liebe bin ich verloren geworden. O in jetzt geh ich beten bereut bach. Es wird der Biot etwas mir schenken. Tolo ho mech mier wat er gein, bis wann it ich will, du leib mach kereien ken. Zi jotir den, kan ur emo an ish gizein. Schön lang bei Gott uns gebeten, also fremde Tieren soll er doch sein. 
и назехо обдуснор, Баготус ги беит. Ой, ти жено, хаби, салештейн ледми. Ой, ти жено, хаби, салелей мирштейен. Ин ломе хундир, ци зецнди гол, мандин сведир, а не дува ройстеруг. Зиведир зуг, а до солдах год фармир. А хайер динц, зи дарф мир гурнит зуг. Валих весалей, на зехке му фарах, Фин мане ой, гисн тах треер. Венех дар монзах, вос е хогит тунинах, Фин мане ой, гисн тах треер. Венех дар монзах, Você roguei So speaking of crossing borders and emigration and immigration, uh Well, let's sing a song now uh, that was written by the wonderful songwriter, singer, musician, uh, uh, labor organizer, and activist, Sai Khan, uh, that uh, you may know of. And um, the, you know, I was, Sai Khan written a lot of incredible songs about. Uh, his life, especially life in the South and uh, being a uh, labor organizer and, and activist in uh, North Carolina, especially in the textile mills. Um, that's one of the destinations that was at the, on the North American end of the emigration from Scotland and the Atlantic Isles in general, especially from Scotland that, uh, that Chica was speaking about earlier. And uh, so I always wondered many years ago, uh, did Saikon ever write anything about his Jewish identity, about his Jewishness, because uh, I think his either his father or his grandfather was a, a cantor or, or lay prayer leader, and uh, he certainly came very much out of that background. And um, In fact, he's written uh, a number of songs about that. Um, this one I particularly love. Uh, as you'll hear, it's called Crossing the Border. It has a, a chorus that uh, I hope you'll all join in with. And uh, I myself was, because um, my father and my whole family on my father's side was from uh, Lithuania, Belarus, and um, I feel very fortunate to have grown up um, around the kind of people that uh, Sai talks about in this song, a song about his grandfather. And uh, also, I partly grew up, though I'm originally from Southern California, I grew up uh, partly in New England, too, and this song has lots of resonances of, of New England um, to crossing the border. As a young man, he traveled through Russia with his uncle and two other singers. Till they drafted him into the army And he had to escape from there When the guards that they'd bribed at the border Started shooting at him and the others They turned back but He, they turned back but he kept on going and kept going for 92 years. We are crossing the border. We are crossing the border. We are crossing the border. Come go, come go, come go. He 
book passage to Nova Scotia was married in Manitoba he worked for the Canadian Pacific carried hard while they built the hotel land was a dollar an acre but he was too careful to buy it so when they found oil on it he still had the story to tell we are crossing the border we are crossing the border we are crossing the border come go come go come go Then he moved down south of the border <clears throat> To the mills on the Merrimack River Pumped gas and kept store for a living And he raised up his daughters and son He'd sit at the head of the table Drinking Hague and Hague pinch bottle whiskey And I'd wonder how someone so gentle Could have done all the things that he'd done We are crossing the border We are crossing the border we are crossing the border Come go, come go, come go He got old and he lived by the ocean I went with my children to see him He stared through the cataracts at him but I think that he saw them just right We buried him up in New England And they say that that's home to the wanderer But home is where the heart is And my heart's with my Zadie tonight we are crossing the border We are crossing the border We are crossing the border Come go, come go, come go We are crossing the border We are crossing the border we are crossing the border Come go, come go, come go yeah. Thank you everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks a lot. I Okay, so um a little bit about my Scottish Jewish background. Um so my family on both sides came from Berlin and um in the 30s and 
emigrated, emigrated, <laughs> were kicked out and fled for their lives and um, landed up in England, in London and in Buckinghamshire, taken in by a Quaker family on my dad's side. And my mum in London during the Blitz and evacuated and um, going through all of that. And then they um, met, my parents met at university in Oxford, in fact, and um, came up to Edinburgh in 1959. Um, me in the womb, a five foot lily pot in the back of their old antique Lee Francis car. It's one of those cars kind of most and arrived in Edinburgh and you know made a life for themselves in Edinburgh which was you know no small thing in the 60s Edinburgh Scotland was a pretty conservative place um but they did their best to settle in and pretty poor place too wasn't it Edinburgh yeah I mean I guess you know it was very dark as well it was like before the stand the sandstone was cleaned in Edinburgh in, in the 60s before that it was dark smoky um old reeky it's called in fact which means old smoky old in the uh, um Scots. so i i grew up in edinburgh and um yeah and my parents you know we we settled into life there and then i got really into uh well i was brought up i should say playing classical violin and um and at a certain point in my life, I think it was when I actually left Scotland and became all nostalgic about it, I started to discover through an old Ali Bain record, um, uh, Scottish traditional music. And uh, when I subsequently moved back to Scotland again, I got really involved in the whole Cayley dance scene and uh, really made a switch to traditional music. And it was then not long after that, that I started to discover this this klezmer thing whatever that is um and um and felt it was kind of resonating quite a lot with my own background of course which I hadn't kind of deeply explored until that point and um and then i suppose i went through a kind of a what what am i you know and and where does tradition where does klezmer fit in scotland it wasn't particularly a big thing or indeed yiddish culture and all its dimensions not not huge in scotland really bigger in london and manchester um, in england um but just recently well a lot thanks to meeting michael and exploring all the dimensions of scottish folk and yiddish culture i have more and more begun to see that both is is a part of what i do and and i think since you've come to scotland it's very much a part of what you do as well so so this is what we've been working on with our music um so i've just found my pen so we are going to play a set of uh, fiddle and guitar tunes which reflect that journey <laughs> Thank you. 
Scottish, which was the Yiddish? <laughs> Shouldn't right. be too hard, I think. <laughs> Rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> All right there. Drink of water um, after that. Do we have people here from uh, Chicago, Scots? I don't know. I can't see you all, but um, if uh, did people join us from the Chicago Scots organization there, if if you did, maybe uh, send uh, send a note in the chat. Um, be Great to know, uh, or other people from uh, uh, around Scotland or of, or of Scottish Jewish heritage, because I know there's a, a lot of folks, a lot of Jews, Jews from Scotland that pop up in surprising places all over the world. Um, Nunu, yeah, okay, so. Here's a bit of my story now. Um, I'm feeling like I should have a, maybe a sip of tea before this, but we, ah, there we are. All right. This is, some of you may um, notice I've, since moving to Scotland, I started drinking tea in a pint glass. What, well, it could be beer that it, looks very flat. It could be a, well, that would be in keeping. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's a, uh, Right, Bengal spice amber ale. <laughs> Oops, that's product placement. Um, so yeah, so part of my story is that uh, after hailing from uh, Los Angeles, California, originally and growing up there uh speaking yiddish among other things <clears throat> among other languages a bit of polish and russian and so forth uh, you know a lot of people are surprised to hear i'm not a new yorker but um though i lived in new york for 35 years um i am not certainly not originally from there grew up partly in uh from my the age of 12 in uh, New England, the Boston area, and then I uh, spent a lot of time up in, uh, particularly in New Hampshire, and uh, and and Vermont, a little bit in Maine, and uh, then after these 35 years of being based in Manhattan, um, I have had the unexpected and unusual fortune of. Uh, living here now on the uh, the east coast of Caledonia um, in a place I never really expected to be but is very much for me a godsend in my life um, I uh, those of you that so I know some of you know me in my New York incarnation um, I never in fact really intended to, uh, to move to New York never mind uh, the pulsating nerve center Manhattan but the uh, I when I was say in my early 20s and even before I thought I was headed for you know getting some land up in Mendocino County or or uh, you know, Vermont or somewhere but uh, it, so this is coming here to a place in base in rural Scotland is a um, kind of a, a long delayed realization in some ways of a of a dream because I've always been I was raised uh, both my parents instilled in me a, a great love of the natural world um, the what we call the outdoors since we a lot of us most of us live indoors a lot of the time um, and uh, so that's some of the background to this song um, it's a song about my father and I uh, my father died 41 years ago in uh, 1981 both of my parents were considerably older than uh, a lot of the parents of my peers my generation um, my and my, my father was born in 1906 for example and he was the youngest in his 
family so that all of my aunts and uncles, this is not my great aunts or great uncles, my aunts and uncles were born either in 1900 or well back into the 1890s. My oldest aunt was born in 1892. My grandparents uh, on my father's side were born in 1864 and 1868, respectively. Um, I never met them, but uh, they, you know, it gives you an idea of the kind of large bridges, arcs of time that are involved in uh, making me, you know, who I am or who, who I've become. And uh, so when my dad died uh, in 1980, I started, two weeks later, I started writing a song about him and I got to a couple of verses and I thought I can't really sum him up here I can't do this now anyway and I I thought I, you know, I could probably never do it really and I put the song aside and uh, about three years ago so 38 years later um, a friend heard some of my noodling around with the song on uh, on a cassette tape and called my attention to it again and, and said what is this and then I was inspired uh, by that to uh, write more to finish the song so it's a song that uh, it is much of it's in English uh, it's partly in Yiddish and uh, the it, it musically it also um, contains elements both of uh, traditional American music and uh, American traditional song and uh, the folky background that I have. Also, uh, Russian traditional music, because my dad came from, as I said, Lithuania, uh, shtetl in eastern Lithuania, and near the border with Belarus. And um, it also, and the song talks about all these different locales where, in particular, my father and I spent time in in the natural world, in, in uh hiking, camping, fishing. Um, I come from a Jewish lumberjack family, so it also involved felling trees and, uh, and splitting wood and uh, doing all those kind of lumberjack things. And the, uh, so it alludes to all that. It, it speaks of these kinds of locations in my life in, uh, on, the, on the Pacific Coast, in New England, specifically on an... Uh, a, an island that my family had uh, in a lake in New Hampshire. I know that sounds very posh, but they, my dad and my uncle bought it for $275 in 1937. And they, my family basically recreated Lithuania there. And then the song also um, draws a lot from where I live here in Scotland, um, uh, right above the sea and then all the various, the animals and the trees and plants that are um, surround us here as I go walking in the fields and the woods in back of us and, and in this area. Um, it's, uh, well, that's probably enough about it. Uh, uh, so I need to caper up here and... You know that feeling is when you get ready for like a major event and then suddenly everything you've organized is Wait, it's behind, it's behind not to be you. found. <laughs> uh, right. That's right. Yes. My capo. Right. God's gift to less talented guitarists. <laughs> When I, the Yiddish words to the song say it doesn't all happen at the beginning but it, they say what becomes of people at the end of the long weary road we barely catch our breath and they're gone time flees like a hare running into the deep forest at sunset on the fields darkening and blue Take with you your axe and saw. Take with you the two boots of leather. Myself, 
I'm coming after you, following you, but not ready to go there yet. On your white path as silent as the snow. In my eyes, I see you darkly, but in my thoughts, you're bright. You were but a human being, but you stood for humanity. You can only count on me to be true to your virtues and to conduct myself as honestly as I can in this world. My father was an immigrant from far across the sea. He came from so far away to end his journey here at the edge of a field by a line of maple trees glowing red and yellow in the autumn of the year. Born in an empire on the very edge of time in a small town in the forest he came into this world wheels of war were turning fires of change were burning he sailed away into a distant land Die Zeit läuft wie ein Hoserweg in tiefen Wald rein. Ich gehe oben auf die Felder, dunklen die Kumbolo. Hoi, nimm dir mit ein Hack und Schäck, dein Tatschkalle voll cool Gerät. Nimm dir mit die Stiefel, die Kosene, die Zwei. Ich komm dir schön an die Kecken, noch geh dir noch nicht noch ab dein weißen Weg, dem ist die linken Wischenei. the maples, in the sighing of the pines, in the wail of the midnight loon when the glowing moon hangs low, in the ripple of the silent fish that stir the depths below, your fire is in me everywhere I go. When the ice is out in April, you pull the boat up in the cove. Hear the thunder quake on the summer's lake in the August sunset glow. And when December's icy hand lays bare the wooded grove, your tracks are in the deep and driven snow. Bin's mir finster in die Ecken, bin's mir lichtig in Gedank. Bloß am Mensch hast du gewesen, doch war Menschheit sich gestellt. 
Kennt sich nur auf mir, verlosen deine Meile, sein Gitterei, und mit Ehrlichkeit sich fiegen auf der Welt. Now for all the roads we traveled and the ones we didn't go For all the tears these many years this twilight song I sing And when the fog of autumn drifts upon the rocks below My heart is like a heron on the wing Na 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 join me na 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 Thank you, everyone. Thanks a lot, folks. Okay, yeah. So we got about ten more minutes here. Why don't we? Um, can we? Uh, can we take twelve? I guess we could probably <laughs> take twelve. Um, what time are you looking at here? Let me have a look. Nine oh four. Yeah. All right, let's do, uh, should we do Leon and, and those or just right into Say Will We Yet? I know this kind of yeah, No, I think we should do um, um, Leon. <coughs> for sure. Yeah, actually, you know what? That, that exactly. We'll do Absolutely. precisely what we planned. <laughs> All right. Medley of tunes from uh, my beloved and late uh, Yiddish fiddle guru, Leon Schwartz. Some of you knew him even, I'm sure, and uh, certainly know of him. From the Bukovina, which was my mother's side of the family, um, the border currently, part of uh, the border area of Romania and Ukraine, kind of in the middle there, Chernovitz, etc. So, Adoine, a Nachspiel na Kolomeike. Thank you. 
and Jika, was that the last planned song in your set? Well, we have one more, um, but why don't we do some, you know, have some discussion and Q&A and discussion and so forth, and then maybe we can finish with the last song because it's a really a great farewell Absolutely. song. Oh, beautiful. Okay, sound? so so I want to let everyone know that this program would not be possible without the amazing Emily Finer, who is with Jika and Michael and is able to take questions <laughs> Emily, I think from you the chat. Show yourself to the camera Emily, for a maybe minute. show yourself. Emily, Emily's been okay, like so our there's Emily. Thank you, Emily, yeah. for this incredible audiovisual treat. The sound is amazing. I what a privilege to be with you while you create this fabric out of your two these two traditions. Yeah, right. It's magic. And in all in um, all kinds of ways, I wouldn't be here if not for Emily. <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna let Emily. I'm gonna let you take over. I'm gonna welcome people to use the reaction function in the bottom of your Zoom window if you want to raise your hand. Is that the right place? Yes. You'll see a raise hand or to type a, a question into the chat or to indicate that you want to ask a question. Yeah, question or comment or, you know. Two people cetera. have already indicated their interest in asking one. And then Jeffrey, I think um, Emily can come to you. Go ahead. Could, could we have Philip Kutner? I think you have a question Ooh. for us. you wave i will be able to find you in or aha uh -huh. got it come on philip kuttner are you unmuted okay let's move on to jeffrey mallow oh, because i really can fine. find jeffrey because i can see his hand okay I'm on mute. I have a question um, from Sajika uh, about the crofters. Um, the way you describe them being forced over to the shoals and to fish. There is a song called The Shoals of Herring. And I've often wondered, in fact, a group called the Crofters Sing it, written, written, I think, by Ewan McCall, whose name is suspiciously Scottish, although he's uh, born in England. Uh, is that the same? <laughs> Oh, you're English too. Um, is that you're muted? <laughs> um, is that the same crofters, or are those their English fellow sufferers? Um, am I muted? No, you're fine. <laughs> okay. Quick on the okay. Th you. Thank you, Emily, our sound woman. Um, so. Uh, no, it, it was it was most definitely um, a Scottish phenomenon because it was it was I mean not that England didn't ha suffer from um, landowners I I, I, I don't know the, but the clearances were definitely a Scottish ph phenomenon um, where you know huge swathes of the land were cleared um, and and it was kind of decreed by Westminster and who were kind of supportive of the the local landowners who came in to um, who, who saw the land as more profitable for their sheep than than having sitting tenants on the land and it was a particularly Scottish um, kind of situation I think I raised my hand, my thumb before because Ewan McCall was very definitely Scottish. He was, you know, born and and brought up in England, but yeah, his name, his both of his parents were Scottish, and um, greater pundits than I have definitely weighed in on the fact that Ewan McCall was very Scottish. <laughs> the, uh, yeah. I'd like to ask Miriam now to ask her question. Hey, from afar, good to see you. And um, I, over the years, I've seen you cross lots of borders. Can you hear me, um, uh, Michael? Most notably, the Ukrainian um, gang at uh, Buffalo on the Roof. And um, I'm wondering, in terms of kind, do you find each time you reach out across boundaries like this, how, how does it feel? Besides good. <laughs> Is it different in one way exactly. or another? Exactly. Good, right. Um, <laughs> hi there. Nice to see you. The, Great um, to see you. I guess with all of these 
borders somehow what I've always been involved in is something that was um, organic to me or close to me so for example um, putting Yiddish music and and the East European Jewishness together with Ukrainianness and Ukrainian uh, traditional music and so forth I mean we all come from the same place you know it was amazing to kind of you know talk to Ukrainian Americans, Ukrainian Canadians of like, you know, oh yeah, my grandmother's from Zmerinka also, you know, and it, uh, so um, this, for me, I mean, all of the the musics that I've gotten involved with, somehow there's a connection to me. It wasn't like kind of um, you know, necessarily like uh, exploring Balinese music or something like that. It was all organic because, I mean, to me, I, you know, growing up with some a couple of Slavic languages, too, was, um, I mean, Ukrainian music was also kind of partly our, our music, more of my mother's side of the family. But um, and with Scottishness, I mean, I uh, to me, gro for folks that are at least open to this and, and interested in a, and uh, in taking in the world around us the um growing up in north america whether in the u.s or especially in canada um things scottish scottish music scottish culture i would say the same for for irishness especially i mean i mentioned i grew up partly in boston um the music and traditions of the atlantic isles are you know nothing foreign to us really they you know and I probably don't need to explain that you know all kinds of things that come from these isles um, lie at the heart of you know both of North American societies and the same thing I mean it's some of you know that I'm I'm very very uh, involved with and, and very feel very close to Mexican music Mexican traditions I come from LA I you know Spanish is like a you know a near native language to me so so, you know, all these things are, they're definitely crossing borders, but they're, they're familiar borders. They're close borders. They're, um, you know, if we, people talk about the other uh, often, you know, if, for me, and I think for a lot of us, those, those kinds of things are like the near other. Um, if, you know, <laughs> if yeah. Ukrainians, Belarusians, Poles, I mean, et cetera, were, you know, our non-Jews, we were their Jews, and and you know, there there are non-Jews. That yeah. was one thing I'd say. And thank. Dira thank. I wonder if Jay Musante has a question. I've asked you to unmute um, just in case, but I thought you had a question. Oh, hi. I, I, I think during the program, my questions were answered about whether the songs were very traditional or whether they were contemporary. Um, so thank you for a wonderful program. And um, you mentioned the Bay Area. Well, here I am in the Bay Area, and we're, we're all united here in our love for uh, Klezmer and Scottish and all how it merged. I never would have imagined. Now I know so much more than I did an hour ago. Thank you. Great, great. Thank you. For, uh, am I? Are we? We're on here, right? The um, no. Thank you. Thanks very much for for being here. I I know. I mean, it's remarkable who's here. Um, you know, people in my life and our lives. From you know, I see people everywhere. From uh, you know, the, from the like you in the Bay Area and people on the West Coast, uh, Marty Morgenbesser is here from uh, Oregon City, Oregon, and I think Asya Fruman is here from uh, in in Kharkiv in Ukraine, and uh, pretty much everywhere in between, uh, and and of course Chicago. <laughs> okay, we have a question from Barbara Lubell. Ooh. Barbara Lubell. Meshke, it's nice to see you. Nice to see you too, Barbara. Hi. Does your family still have uh, the island in uh, New, New, New Hampshire? In New Hampshire. Not anymore. It was, um, unfortunately, we had to sell it when my dad died. And I 
I lived far away at the time, and it seemed. Uh, it, it, the short answer is no, <laughs> but um, very much in my memory and the memories of my family. And uh, every so often, I drive by it. We we actually, my father's second wife became friendly with the woman who originally bought it after us. So we, we would be there occasionally too. But Sounds the short like answer is no, but I but I still love New Hampshire and Vermont and Northern New England. Yeah. And what was, was that beer or, or, or ale in the glass? Neither. Beer or ale in the glass. It was tea. Oh, it's tea, right. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. So it really was tea. Yeah, oh, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> But I kid you. <laughs> All right, see you at a, a Yiddish row, the Camp YNY. Absolutely, yeah, and see you on Facebook, as we, <laughs> as we so often do. Cyberspace. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Happy solstice. Oh, man. <laughs> I'd like our Silvio to um, join us Hello. now with a question. Oh. Michael. Silvio. Tu é Silvio Vinhaiala from Brazil. From Brazil, Silvio. Right, right. Bom dia. É de Vancher Maynard, e eu vim divide with you a commemoration. Pink do Siue is macht fertigue vos mesenen. Introduce. Aha. Es ist gewesen eine Nacht, die in die Ivo, ich gedenkt nicht, als es gewesen von Josef, du Josef Lotek, Josef, Sommers Vater, oder Barbara Kirschen, was Gimblet. Aha. Es ist gewesen, du in Ivo, eine Nacht, die Gris von dir, in all those years, Matthias, ungenommen do in Brazil, in New York, in a hof as we can, we the Zeya, Zeya Zeya free. Alci que quis, um grande abraço, Michael, e o calor aqui do Brasil. Ah, right, obrigado, obrigado. Ich frage nicht, sich zu sehen mit dir und mit euch, mit euch alle in einem Arsch, in einer großen Dank euch für sein, mein Verkommenheit und in, in Verbringenheit mit uns in einem, in, uh, in die warmste, warmste Gerüsten, warmste Wünsche euch zu gesund zu leben, zu lange hier. Such a beautiful, beautiful concert, I frage nicht, wir sind so happy that you are able to be here with you and Jika and listen to this beautiful music, this gift that you thank gave Thank you, us. thank you, thank you for being part of it. It's wonderful. So now our, our map, our geography extends all the way down to Sao Paulo in Brazil. Amazing. As I have not given the song in the Alte Heim, a grace in the world. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. We have a question from Susan Lerner. Hi, Susan. Who has been here? Where is Susan? New York. I think you're muted, Susan. Good friend of ours. Who's been here also. Okay. Shira, we can't hear you. Shira, yeah, me hear and don't need. Did Shira just drop off the map here, or? Uh oh. Yeah. She'll be back. Svetch Spät. This is Jake. Svetch and Spät. Does the rain lead parents? Yeah, yeah. Oscar and the border, We have one more question, which is from Deborah R. Oh, Great. God. De so, Shalom Aleichem. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, I'm just wondering with the border, if, if there have been any comparison, contrast work that you've done 
around this political moment with rising fascism or the rising of the right, both in terms of Scottish and Yiddish coming together. Not to push that on you, but if it if it has arisen, I would be curious. In, I mean, short answer, yes. I mean, certainly in this in this company here, but. Um, when you say, I mean, is, are you referring to, to, to specifically what we do or what we do here tonight or what's going on in Scotland or, or, or can you say a little more? <laughs> you, have, you have to unmute oh, she's her. Muted. I'm sorry to take the time. I meant as you choose which songs to share from both of your traditions, if there have been some you can both pull on and if you've noticed some similarities with any of those. That's kind of what I meant, to speak to the moment, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think um, Scotland in particular is, um, I mean, in the UK ha has suffered, you know, has, the people have been marginalized and, um, um, and, and have not had a voice and and, uh, and and I suppose there's a lot of similarities as in with the culture, for instance, Gaelic culture in Scotland is, is very much a threatened culture and a threatened language. Um, although Gaelic is now officially, the, uh, the Scottish government has made Gaelic our second official language and, you know, a lot of resources and funding goes into preserving it. Um, and who knows if we go down the independence route, things may be rectified further. But there's a lot of kind of um, commonality, I would say, with um, Yiddish culture, Gaelic culture, and kind of marginalization of peoples. Yeah, ab absolutely. And I mean, we, you know, we, we didn't happen to, you know, do material specifically that spoke to that. Well, we did a little bit tonight. But no, we're both very plugged into, you know, those those struggles and the issues. Um, I think I'll, I will say one thing is that um, it just in terms of language and marginalization and so forth, um, there's in Scotland is not only the Gaelic language, but there's also what a great deal of the country, uh, what a lot of people in the country speak, which is Scots, which is, you know, uh, the Germanic language of Scotland that's uh, closely related to English. Um, some of you know, a lot of many of you may think of it as Scottish dialect, but it actually is a language in its own right, and basically has the same relationship to English as uh, a very similar relationship to English as Yiddish does to German. In other words, they. Um, Scots and English and uh, Yiddish and German share a common ancestor, but they are not dialects of each other. Mm -hmm. And so th that's something that um, I'm very much in dialogue with some um, Scots language activists about this issue of, you know, language recognition and, and acknowledgement of that, that Scots is actually a language of Scotland and not... Uh, not only a dialect and so forth, similar to issues around some issues, not so much anymore, but with Yiddish and German. So that's some words. I think, can we have one last question from Shira? And um, then we'll move on to a final song. Can you hear me now? Hi. <laughs> ah, Mesh and Emily. Thank you so much for this lovely concert. My question is musical. Um, the connection between the Yiddish idiom and the Ukrainian idioms, I thought, was a natural musical dialogue. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, now you're both playing, you know, instruments which are tuned to the Western scale. But in the real traditional uh, Scottish modes, how does it relate to the modes that we know from Eastern Europe that we think of as the Yiddish modes? Well, I mean, do you want to, I, I, I can say something about this. Uh, yeah, I, I'm no great expert. I will hand over to Michael, but just to say, um, I think Scottish music, um, there's a, a modal key that that's a lot of Scottish music is in, which is, um, which is what a lot of the pipe music 
plays, which perhaps has some similarity, but otherwise I would say it's it, it probably has less in common than Ukraine and Yiddish. But <laughs> yeah, for sure. But I mean, it, you know, I mean, I, I when we, when we, for example, when we make, you know, it when Emily and I make Shabbos here, for example, I mean, we don't necessarily do it all the time, but we do it, you know, pretty much every Friday or anything I do that, um, I mean, I'll sometimes make Kiddush or, or we sing Shalom Aleichem or something like that in, um, in the modes of the, the Gallic churches of the, uh, West of the Western Isles of the Hebrides. Um, wow. so that's, you know, I mean, I, you know, they're, I mean, and you know, every everything that we're playing is a mode. It's just some of them are more familiar um, Western modes. But um, I mean, that that's the kind of stuff that I think Jika was mm. talking about, and. Um, I mean, how did it strike you when the, for instance, what we call our Skoju medley, <laughs> which was when I played all the fiddle tunes, which were kind of a medley of switching. They were alternating between Scottish and Jewish. Did that feel, I'm putting it out to the audience. <laughs> um, how did that feel? Did it jar? Did it blend? Did you find it hard to distinguish them sometimes? I, I thought it blended, but there is a definite, you feel the transit. Yeah. Which is nice, sure. which is a really yeah. nice aspect of it. Yeah. Crossing the border. Yeah, absolutely. Indeed, you feel the border. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right. They're Good. definitely there. So we should play. Well, let's, why don't we, let, we wanted to wrap up with um, a pairing of a couple of songs that. Um, Ah, okay. The, the a pairing of a couple of songs that um, one, the first one is a uh, Scottish song from the mid 1800s. And um, the second is actually a Yiddish song that may, may well be from the mid 1800s. Um, the, the Scottish song is called Say Will We Yet, which in Scots is, means so will we yet. In other words, we yet will do the various things that are described here and um it was uh well it, it's it's I, i'm going to sing it a little more in english than in than in scots um it'll be pretty comprehensible to everyone um it was written by a guy named walter watson who was a farmer from uh a bit uh, west of here maybe more over part way towards glasgow from here and uh It um, it talks about you know the fact that we are uh, we have been together as a community and we do the wonderful and enriching things that we do together or that are through thick and thin and um, and we've done that always and say will we yet and. The Yiddish song is as nish keine mine zusammen mit dem Geld. If you don't have um, the virtues of loving kindness and patience and generosity and openness towards strangers, um, then along with whatever material goods, material wealth you might have in this world, then what's the point of of being here in this world? And and uh, What's you know what's what's life all about? So say will we yet? And as nish kainimine, there's a chorus you can sing along with. Uh, well, you'll hear the say will we yet chorus, and uh, and the Yiddish one you'll hear also. So thanks so much for being here with all of us. Thank you for joining us Thank in this you. this uh, adventure, uh, international adventure, experiment in international living here. Right, lots of love. Um, Zeit uns gesund um, and Lomme sich treffen auf Simchis
my cronies and give us your crack. Let the wind tack the cares of this life on its back. Our hearts to despondency we never will submit. For we've aye been provided for, and say will we yet, and say will we yet, and say will we yet. For we've aye been provided for, and say will we yet. Tankard, unhappy brown ale, it will comfort our hearts and enliven the tale. For will I be the merrier the longer that we sit? For we drank together many's the time, and say well we yet, and say. And say will we yet For we've drunk together money's the time And say will we Zusammen mit dem Geld, wo je arbeitste auf der Welt. Als nicht kein Biene zusammen mit dem Geld, wo je brauchste die ganze Welt. Als nicht kein Gemilles hast du dem zusammen mit dem Geld, wo je geiste auf der Welt. Als nicht kein das zusammen mit dem Geld. Boje, darfste de ganze vel. Ay, la, 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 Wo je hore veste of der Welt, as nisch kan basik is zusammen mit dem Geld. Wo je willste of der Welt, as nisch kan schies zusammen mit dem Geld. Wo je wo je zichte of der Welt, as nisch kan chochme zusammen mit dem Geld. Wo je chapste die ganze Welt. Ay la 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 la. Ay la 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 la. Ay la 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 la. Join us, sing with me. Ay la 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 la. Ay la 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 la. I lay, 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 l
Ai lai 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 la 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 Ai lai 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 la 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 Whoops Thank you all lots of love Zeit gesund. Zeit gesund.